Greetings and welcome to this special session of teaching at the Abundant Life Bible School in Nepal Gunj, Nepal. Thank you for joining me as together we look into God's Word. And this evening, evening here in the United States, it is morning in Nepal. We are going to be looking into spiritual warfare. So if you're watching and you know someone that speaks Nepalese, invite them, share this broadcast. And of course, everyone who speaks English, you can also join us because I will be speaking in English. And thank you, Pastor Deepak, for the opportunity and welcome students. Uh, And um, I want us to look into God's word. We're going to be speaking on spiritual warfare. And I'm going to give you seven points that are very important. We touched on this subject earlier when I taught you several months ago, but I feel it is very important as you prepare to leave the Bible school and begin to work in ministry that you be prepared for spiritual warfare. <laughs> And the first point that I would like to make is that we live in two worlds, in the visible and the invisible. We also can say we live in the physical world and in the spiritual world. Just because we do not see something with our physical eyes does not mean that it does not exist. We, we cannot see bacteria, we cannot see atoms, but we know they exist. We see their function, we see their results. In the book of Numbers, chapter 22, we read about a prophet called Balaam. And he disobeyed God and went someplace God did not want him to go. And God placed an angel in his path to stop him. Balaam did not see the angel, but his donkey that he was riding on saw the angel and stopped. And the prophet beat his donkey upset that he would not move forward, not realizing that the donkey saved his life. 
And we see that finally his eyes came open and he could see the angel with a drawn sword that could have killed him had the donkey not stopped. So the point that I'm trying to make here is there is a realm that we do not see with our physical eyes. There are angelic beings, those that are angels of God, and there are demons or the fallen angels. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, Paul wrote these words, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. so our second point is we are engaged in spiritual or invisible warfare. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 12, Paul writes to the Ephesians and says that they should be prepared for this war. He tells them, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You cannot face the devil or his demons in your own power. Jesus said to the disciples in Acts chapter 1 to wait in Jerusalem until they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And in verse 8, he said, and you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the farthest corners of the earth. We need to be filled with God's spirit and with God's power 
to be able to go into those places where God sends us to preach the gospel. That's why Paul said, be strong in the Lord in Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, God's might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, God does not send us without giving us power and without giving us spiritual armor. Jesus said that we will have power to tread on lions and scorpions. Well, we're talking about spiritually lions and scorpions. And in verse 12 of Ephesians 6, Paul says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. As you go to preach the gospel, there will be people opposed to that work. You will have people that are, are in government that may not want you to be there. But your battle is not against people. I think we got cut off there. I will continue until Pastor Deepak is able to come on. Your battle is not against people, against those individuals, but against those spiritual forces, those demons that are either controlling them or influencing those people that are rising up against the preaching of the gospel. Again, it looks like we froze up here. Pastor Deepak, as soon as you're able to come back on, we will continue on. But let me just restate that again. And I, I okay, go ahead. Were you able to hear me, Pastor Deepak? And uh, here is a classic example of demonic spirits trying to stop this teaching from reaching these students who are about to graduate from Bible school in Nepal to go out into remote places to evangelize and plant churches. And the devil does not want them to hear this message. And so sometimes you will say, well, it's just a technical problem. Yes, I understand there are technical problems. Very curious that just when I get to key points on this teaching, we get this freeze up on uh, in the internet so that this message is held up, but it will not be held up. So, Pastor Deepak, let me repeat that again. We got, uh, looks like um, there was a disconnection there or a freeze up. 
um, your battle is not against those individuals. Your battle is against the demonic spirits that are influencing those people who are coming against the preaching of the gospel. So what you what do you do when you confront these kinds of situations? Well, Jesus has given you and me power and authority over those demonic spirits. So in prayer, we come against those demonic spirits. And we command those spirits to be bound. And we pray that the blindness, the spiritual blindness over people's eyes would be removed. So just like you have a governmental authority over villages, over towns, cities, states, and countries, you have a structure also in the spiritual realm of authorities that are ruling over an area and causing certain things to happen in that region. So remember, if if you face difficulty, don't give up. Jesus has already defeated the devil. And we do not fight to get the victory, but in Jesus Christ, we already have the victory. And so we are fighting from a position of authority in Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Where is Jesus seated? He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is in the place of authority in heaven. And because of what Jesus did when he died on the cross, you have that authority that he has given you over all the power of the enemy. So do not be frightened. Do not be intimidated. Do not fall into fear. Jesus Christ already defeated Satan. And you have victory because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 
So when you face demonic spirits, demonic influences, you, you bind them in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. A, a better translation is whatever we bind on earth should already be something that is bound in heaven. Well, the, the devil has no power in heaven. He is bound. So, so from that position of heavenly authority in Jesus Christ, you bind the devil. You remind him that Jesus defeated him. You see, people do what they do because they are being influenced by someone or something. So you don't fight the person, you fight the demon that is making that person to do those evil things. Number three, our enemy is our enemy is the devil. It's not a person, it's the devil. It's, it's not someone from a different church. It's the devil. <laughs> the devil is mentioned 140 times in the Bible. Jesus mentioned him 25 times. He was a, the devil was a cherub, an angel of high rank in heaven who rebelled against God. According to Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. The, it tells us you were the anointed cherub. But he rebelled against God and he was kicked out of heaven along with one third of the angels who followed him. So if one third of the angels followed the devil or Satan, how many remain with God? Two thirds. So there are two times as many angels with God as opposed to Satan. Pardon? There are two times as many angels with God than Satan. So two-thirds with God, one-third with the devil. Those fallen 
angels, those one-third angels, in my opinion, those are today's demons. Most of the time when you are in spiritual battle, you are not fighting Satan himself, but one of his demons or one of his fallen angels. Jesus said that he is a thief and he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, according to John 10.10. 10. So if something is killing, if something is stealing, if something is destroying, it's not from God, it's from the devil. He's the one that comes to do that. So do not be ignorant of the devil's devices of how he operates. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So that is God's will for your life and for other people. The devil comes as a thief to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Number four, he comes as a roaring lion. I don't know if you have heard the roar of a lion, but it's frightening. But you see, some people become afraid just from the noise, just from the roar. Remember that Jesus defeated the devil. Jesus is the lion of Judah. So, yes, the devil seeks whom he may devour. Well, we read in 1 Peter 5, 8, to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom he may eat. <laughs> A male lion can eat a lot of meat, up to 35 kilograms in one time. That would be about pounds. But, 
the lion does not work alone. He has a pride and he sends them to catch the prey. Usually the weak, the young, the inexperienced, that's whom they can catch more easily. Because uh, if, if a group of animals, even though they're not strong like lions, but if they stay together, they can fight off lions. So the lion tries to, the lions try to separate from that group a young one or a weak one and catch them and eat them. That is, that is why it is important that we be part of the body of Christ, that we gather together with other believers. And even as you go to plant churches, try to stay in contact with other pastors, with other leaders. So just like the lion uses the pride, his fa lion family, to go out and catch the prey, the devil uses demons to catch his prey. Now, in, in Ephesians 6, 12, Paul said that there are uh, rankings in the spiritual, in the spirit world. You have principalities, you have powers, you have rulers of darkness. Oh, yeah, buddy. And he says there are spiritual hosts, meaning spiritual armies of wickedness. If you read the last part of Ephesians 6, 12, he says, after the darkness of this age, he says, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Hosts refers to armies, angel armies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, the Bible refers to Jesus Christ as the Lord of hosts or the Lord of the armies of the angels of heaven. Now, the devil tries to stop people from salvation by blindness, spiritual blindness. In Second Chronic, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians four four, Paul wrote, "Whose minds the God of this age has blinded." who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine 
on them. So when you are going to preach to people, pray, pray that against the God of this age who has blinded their spiritual eyes so that they would be able to hear and see and understand the gospel and receive the message of salvation. Another thing the devil does, he robs the seed that is planted by the sower in Luke 12. You will be going and sowing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus said in Luke 8, 12, that some of the seed will fall by the wayside. He says, those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So when you go to preach, the seed that you sow, some of it will fall on good ground, some of it will fall on rocky soil, some of it the devil's going to try to steal and take it away. Since the fall of man, the devil tries to subvert the plans of God. Not only does he target the unsaved, but he also targets believers. And sometimes he will put a thought in your mind. Jesus said to, to Peter in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. So you see the the, the he targets believers. To, to subvert the plans and purposes of God for your life and for the ministry that God has called you to do. Number five. 
we do not fear the devil. He is not God and he is not equal to God. God is omniscient, meaning all-knowing. He knows everything. The devil is not. See, God knows what is in your mind. The devil does not. God, um, uh, God knows your thoughts, but the devil only knows your thoughts if you speak them out. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. The devil is not. God is everywhere. He is in Nepal. He is in America. He is in Africa. He is in India. He is in Russia. He is in Ukraine. God is everywhere. But the devil is not. He is limited to one place at one time. When Jesus was on earth, he too was limited to being in one place at one time. But he said to the disciples, it is better that I go to the Father, for I will send you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. God is omnipotent. He has all power. The devil is not omnipotent. God has all power. The devil has limited power. In 1 John 4, 4, in 1 John 4, 4, we read, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So, who is greater? It's God. It's Jesus Christ. He is in you. If God is for you and God is in you, who can be against you? Amen. So number six, we know the devil's end. We know how he will end. Satan go 
in Revelations 20.10, we read that Satan is doomed to the lake of fire. You see, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God said to the devil, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This was a prophetic word from God about the coming of Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman. And here God said, it, meaning Jesus, shall bruise your head, the head of the devil. Yes, the devil was able to bruise his heel, but Jesus resurrected from the dead he defeated the devil and he took away the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan. So, number uh, seven, we are not ignorant of his, the devil's devices. He is sneaky. He is crafty. In 2 Corinthians 2.11, Paul says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So we need to be alert and watch so that we are not fooled, we are not deceived by his devices. And in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said that he's a thief and he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When a football team goes to play against another football team, they watch videos of how the other team plays to learn their tactics. What if two football teams will have a match, the players watch videos of the other team to see how they play and what tactics they use when they play football. In World War II, there was a famous German general called uh, Rommel. Rommel. Yes. Yes. And he was an expert on tank 
warfare, fighting with tanks. But an American general by the name of Patton defeated him and uh, and and he was just shocked. He was surprised that anyone could defeat him. And he asked, how did you do it? And Patton said, I read your book. He read his book about the tactics of tank warfare. And he used it against Rommel to defeat him. Well, John wrote in 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And going back to Ephesians chapter 6, Paul said to put on the whole armor of God in verse 13. And he said, have uh, your waist girded with truth. The devil hates truth. He is a liar and the father of lies. And so you always want to proclaim the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Paul told us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Our heart is protected by our righteousness. Our righteousness is not from our good works. It is from our faith in Jesus Christ who justified us. We have, we have a right standing before God through our faith in Jesus Christ. He tells us to put on the helmet of salvation. We must protect our minds. The devil is a liar. He tells you your sins are not forgiven. He tells you you are not saved, but he is a liar. He 
Protect your mind by filling your mind with God's word. Have your feet covered uh, it, or, or in strong, good uh, covering that will, that will keep you steady in your walk as you go to proclaim the gospel of peace. You know, when football players play, their shoes have metal cleats underneath so that they don't slip when they are running on the grass. When the Roman soldiers went to war, they had footwear, they had shoes on that had cleats underneath to give them sure footing. Paul tells us to take the shield of faith. This is so important. You see, the Roman soldiers, they had the metal small shield that they used in the parades, but they had a large wooden shield that they used when they went to battle. And they had to soak that wooden shield in water. Otherwise, when the enemies would shoot darts with fire, their shield would catch on fire and they would be left without protection. That is the shield was made of wood, and so they would soak that wooden shield in water. Okay. Oh. And because the shield was wet, when the enemy would shoot darts or arrows with fire, that fire would be put out in that shield that was wet. We need to soak our spiritual shield in the water of God's word. So that when the fiery dar darts or the fiery arrows of the devil come with doubt, with unbelief, they are quenched, they are stopped, they were put out by the water of the word. And Paul says that we must use the sword of the spirit. Uh, 
the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. So when you preach God's word, the, the word of God penetrates into the soul, into the spirit of man. And the Holy Spirit takes God's word that you preach and brings conviction to that person hearing God's word. We need to utilize God's word. When the devil tempted Jesus, he used God's word. He answered the devil by saying, it is written. So when you are attacked by the devil with doubts, with unbelief, you speak back what God's word says. You speak the specific word that is necessary for that issue. If the devil tries to bring fear on you, you say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And finally, Paul says, praying always in the spirit. It is important to pray in our own language. But God has also given us the ability to pray in an unknown tongue, the language of the Holy Spirit. And it is very important that a good part of your prayer time is also praying in other tongues that the Holy Spirit has given you. Sometimes, sometimes we do not know how to pray about a certain situation. But when we pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us the words and other tongues of how to pray according to God's will. So, Pray much, pray in your language and pray in tongues. You will be recharged. 
God will show you, God will guide you what to do in certain situations. So pray with your mind, but also pray with your spirit. And remember, our battle is not against people. But it is against spiritual beings and spiritual forces. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every one of these students in Nepal. And I pray that you would empower them with your Holy Spirit. And as they go forth to evangelize and start new churches. Guide them and lead them by your Holy Spirit. Give them boldness and power. Save the lost, heal the sick through them. Confirm the preaching of your word with signs, miracles, and wonders. And I pray, O oh God, that through these students, many will come into your kingdom. So use them fearlessly. May they be courageous in Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you for the opportunity. God richly bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to say uh, good night to those who are watching us around the world. God bless you. Pastor Deepak is in Nepal Ganj, Nepal. And we were teaching at the Abundant Life Bible School that is about to close in just a few days. Thank you to all who have tuned in. And do pray for Pastor Deepak. And do pray for all of these students that were that are that you saw here that are studying there will be graduating on the 29th. Is that correct, Pastor Deepak? Yes. Yes. yes, on the 29th of September, and they will be going out all over Nepal. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So please pray for them. And if God speaks to you, you want to support, you want to help, there is a great need. And this is a wonderful place to sow into this Bible school and into the lives of these that will be carrying the gospel into that nation. God richly bless you, Pastor Deepak, and God bless everyone who has joined us today. May the Lord richly bless you. Do share this broadcast. God bless you.